All right, what's up everyone? It's Mandy V with Mandy V Media and I am here at the lovely Buddy Guys Legends. Yes. It's such a beautiful establishment and I'm here with Thank his you. daughter. Yes. The one and only Chicago's own Shauna. What's up everybody? <laughs> um, in case you guys didn't know, Shauna is doing her thing and she has done her thing. She's actually one of only seven women who has had a number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 and that was with Stand Up yes. with Ludacris. It's a blessing, yes, definitely <laughs> a blessing. I'm pretty much official. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of um, Ludacris, last, around last month, both of you posted a picture of the two of you together. Yes. Sort of like a reunion yes. and we know that uh, for a few years, that was a much anticipated reunion because for a few years, you guys were kind of estranged. Yes, we were. So tell me what was, what was, what was the conversation or what was the moment leading up to you guys meeting up and then finally, you know, getting that, that picture that everyone got a chance to see on Instagram. What were the mo moments leading up to that? It's crazy. The moments leading up to it were honestly just us both getting booked in the same venue. Mm -hmm. Um, via Twister's manager, Raw. So shout out to Raw, making that happen. Mm -hmm. So he called and he was like, look, um, you know, he, he books me for shows a lot. So he called and he said, this particular show is in Kentucky. It's in an arena and um, Luda's gonna be there. And mm -hmm. I was like, cause I literally have not spoken to him since I left, mm -hmm. you know, Def Jam disturbing the peace. Mm -hmm. Like not one word, we haven't even been in the same vicinity. So I was kind of like, whoa, you know, it's like, it's okay. I'm like, cool. I mean, you know, I wasn't going to say no. So mm -hmm. I was like, cool, let's just book it. So, you know, I was cool. Let's be booked it like a month and a half out. And, um, you know, usually when it's that long away, okay, I'll think about it later. I'll mm -hmm. stress about it later. So honestly, when it got close to the date, I was like, yo, this is really about to happen. Is it going to be like cool or is it going to be kind of like, <laughs> standoffish I don't know because we haven't spoken yeah. but honestly it's like I just know that business is business mm -hmm. and relationships are relationships and it takes a strong person to separate the two mm -hmm. and me knowing him as a friend and having a friendship with him I knew that things were going to be okay mm -hmm. so um, I also knew there was a conversation that needed to be had but I didn't know if we would do it there or not so it, it went you know leading up to the show it was like kind of my people talking to his people kind of smoothing everything but just to kind of run it all together I went on kind of early in the day mm -hmm. and he was the headliner of course so by the time he was on his way to the venue, he was calling and saying, yo, Shauna, don't leave. You know, I'm on my way. I want to holler at you. So I was like, oh, God. And I got the bubble guts. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. Oh, my God. We haven't spoken. There was so many people here. So boom, he gets there. They come and grab me. They're like, Lou, like, come here. And when I walked into the room, like, he and I hugged. Mm -hmm. And instantly it went back to... 03, 04, like everybody in the room, everything kind of just like, you could just feel the thickness just like fade away and everything mm -hmm. was love. If, if um, I mean, if people not familiar with what day it was, it was like the day before Father's Day. Mm -hmm. So they had a lot of liquor and everybody was taking shots and there was a lot of other gentlemen that are involved in his, you know, his team and mm -hmm. label and stuff. So they were all there and everybody was like kind of, you know, just celebrating Father's Day yeah. and just enjoying the vibe. There was really no conversation. It was mm -hmm. just like, it was just love. You know, how the kids, I was, he was asking about my kids. I was asking about his and how's mom, how's mom. And then, um, and then um, I just started taking selfies. And I was like, come on, let's take a selfie before you gotta go on stage. Mm -hmm. And we took it. And he saw it, he was like, damn, you know how to take those. <laughs> you know how guys, they don't really, they not really in the selfies. Yeah. So, um, before he left to go on stage, he was like, send me that picture. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in that, in all of that, we decided that we were going to use a larger platform to announce that we, you know, kind of, you know, let bygones be bygones mm -hmm. and we back cool. And I was like, cool with that. So I was like, don't post anything, everybody. I was telling my whole team, don't post no pictures. We saving this. So afterwards, we get ready to hit the road and then boom, I'm starting to see 
tags on my Instagram. Oh my God, Sean and Luda, Sean and Luda. I'm like, oh my God, somebody from my team. Why would y'all do that? I told y'all not to do that. He gonna be so mad at me. So I, I, I hit one of the tags. And I look, and it's his page. Mm-hmm. He posted it. Mm-hmm. And I just jumped out of the car screaming, like, oh, my God, he let everybody know. And he and had the perfect like, caption. What, something about family doesn't need to be explained, yep. what's understood, yep. you know. Yeah, it was so cool. It was so cool because it was like, you know, it was cool for me to get back around him and have that vibe. But it's like so, so many of our fans mm-hmm. wanted to share that moment, too. So I was kind of like, dang, I wish we could have kind of posted. But when I saw that he posted it right then and there, it was just like surreal. You know what I'm saying? It was it was really awesome. And, and I bet on your end, it was a huge sense of relief. Like it really like, was because it really was. I'm a Capricorn mm-hmm. and we don't we don't like drama. Mm-hmm. We don't hold grudges. Um, we, we pretty much like it is what it is, but yeah. we need resolution. Mm-hmm. We need to know, hey, we ain't rocking, or we need to know, hey, mm-hmm. we're going to get beyond that and we rocking. Mm-hmm. We can't be in limbo. Right. So for me to be in limbo for so long, it was weighing on me. Yeah. So, you know, either way it was going to go, whether it was going to be, hey, bygones are bygones, I love mm-hmm. you to death, wish you the best in part ways, or whether it was going to be, hey, we're going to drop that, mm-hmm. let's get back to this music, let's get these people what they want. Cool. Either way it was going to go, I'm cool with it. I'm elated that it went that way. Yeah. Because, like, the next day he was sending me music. Like, let's start working. Let's get this going. So. Okay. So. Yeah, it was really dope, y'all. Is really there dope. some, is there some, something in the works for the end of this year or maybe 2020? Well, I will say for all the true DTP Ludacris Shauna fans, you guys know that we're coming up on the 20 year anniversary of his first album. Mm-hmm. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. So if you know us, <laughs> you know we got to do something, you know, special. Stay tuned. I that. can't wait. Yep. 20 years since back for the first time. For your own music, you have been, I've been on your Instagram and I have been seeing you posting these videos where yeah. you just like spitting straight. <laughs> Fire. Like. I'm so sick and tired of these bitches who act like they fuck with me. Know that they can't even fuck with me. Y'all don't get mad at the smell of them humbly. Make them check out my flat like a bumblebee. Stumbling back to the whip to get back to the crib. Don't get back with no bitch because they back on my shit in the back of the whip, in the back of the back, in the back of the wrist. Too many chips to be fucked like, with. Even the brat posted one of your videos oh, on her page. Shout out, brat. Oh my God. <laughs> I love her so much. Like, it's really catty mm-hmm. in the industry amongst women. I'm mm-hmm. sure I don't have to tell you that. Oh, no. So when you come across a genuine woman who embraces you, mm-hmm. who supports you, regardless of who may think who's is, who's better or whatever, oh my God, hold on to that. Mm-hmm. And that is what I have in my sister. She mm-hmm. is like 100% supportive of me. Same as I with her. We mm-hmm. don't have any hangups about anything, how whoever feels. First of all, Brat is the queen of hip hop to me, <laughs> period. Okay, because I'll give you the reason. She's the first and only female to go platinum in hip hop. First time for a female to go platinum. That right there is queenship to me. Mm-hmm. You know, because no one else will ever hold that title. Absolutely. So I forever it's taken. Like that. You know, right. there's plenty of queens in the game. Don't get me wrong. We all queens. But no one else will have that title but mm-hmm. the Brat. So give her that respect. I love the fact that she's all, no matter where she is in the world or in the country, whatever, mm-hmm. she always navigates back home and oh, she yeah. always pushes home to the forefront. Yes. Like I know she's done it with you. Mm-hmm. She's, I think she, she also did it with Dreezy as well. Oh, yeah. But the, the videos you've been posting, is this part of some, a mixtape or an EP or something that you might have in the works? Yeah, it okay. is. It is. Honestly, <laughs> right now, what I'm just trying to do is kind of wake everybody up. Mm-hmm. That's why I do these freestyle videos and yeah. stuff like that, rather than just trying to put out music and facilitate it through a SoundCloud or a YouTube. Mm-hmm. I just want the shock value. I want the the word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Hey, sweetheart, and and let everybody just kind of build up this momentum mm-hmm. to saying, okay, Shauna is not playing. She back like she never left. Yep. And then I'll consider whether it should be a mixtape or an album Mm -hmm. or something like that because it's like, I don't, you know, I got to do it to make money at the end of the Mm -hmm. day. You know, when I was doing it back then, it was for fun. Now I'm not playing. I need this money. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I got other ways to make money. You know, I'm not in here, out here just to entertain for free. So <laughs> you're hurt. <laughs> we gotta make sure the numbers is right, and then we'll just, you know, we'll facilitate the project the way mm-hmm. it needs to be. You know, but right now I just kind of want to wake everybody up. Mm-hmm. I want to get everybody to remember, like I'm really one of those lyricists. Yeah. Like I'm not a rapper. I'm a lyricist. 
I take pride in metaphors and creativity and storytelling and putting thoughtfulness into the music, making classic music that will last for generations. Mm -hmm. And I need to remind people of that. So that's just pretty much what I'm doing. Y'all Yo, gotta check me out. Like, I love the feedback too. So y'all can hit my page, Shauna Worldwide. I'm always on there interacting with everybody. Let me know what y'all think. I love feedback. Constru constructive criticism mm -hmm. is very much welcomed. Well, your father, he said he's never made a record he liked. Would you say the same thing? You know, because I, I know what he meant. He's okay. being raised by him. Like, okay. he, we are our worst, worst critiques. Mm -hmm. He has eight Grammy Awards. Mm -hmm. So he's definitely made some likable music. Yes, <laughs> for all of us. His, yes, but, his, but I know from his standards, it's, he's always pushing himself. Even now at 83 years old, mm -hmm. he's always pushing himself to be better. So even when he cuts the final lick on the guitar, the final vocal, I know him. He's still saying, that's not it. Mm -hmm. He's just a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of where that comes from, and I do get that a lot. Okay. And then sometimes I have to have my team like tell me, yo, don't record anymore because you're going to mess <laughs> the song up. Like, you got it. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> yes. I want to take you back to um, 2010, something okay. you said in, in one of the interviews you had. Okay. You said in regards to Nicki Minaj. I appreciate her because all they wanted us to be on was these strip club records or a feature on your sexy song and that's it. Mm -hmm. Now it's like we are a force to be reckoned with. Is it your perception that women today are still getting that level of respect in the music industry? I think it's even more now. Mm -hmm. Now you see even more women being successful and uh, branding themselves mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, putting out music and getting great reception. Whereas like kind of back when I started, you had to be just that one token girl mm -hmm. of the go group of guys. Yeah. Now you got women that are coming out on them, their own and mm -hmm. being successful. So yes, I feel like um, we as women in the industry need to work a little bit more on our camaraderie, on, on our unity, mm -hmm. because um, it's enough for us all to eat. And we all gonna be different. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's hard to work with women because our functionality is so much more, has so much more demand on it in the mm -hmm. world. So of course you're gonna deal with a lot more when you're dealing with a woman. And it takes a lot to understand that and, and be able to work with a lot of women and their personalities and their needs and wants, yep. and their ethics, their values and stuff like that. But um, I think, that's another thing that I kind of push in who I am in the mm -hmm. industry to just kind of remind my female artists in the game to just, you, people aren't going to be who you want them to be. Mm -hmm. You have to respect people for who they are. And then you try to find a happy medium and work with them because it's enough for us all to eat. All these different male rappers, you got Tia, you got Gucci, you got Moneybag Yo, you got The Baby, you got Lil Baby, you got... OG, all, I mean, I mean, 147 Cowboy, on, yeah. And they all just making money. They're mm -hmm. all successful. They all shooting videos together, collaborating, and generating, you know, generating just everything, just the promo, just the shows, just the music they're putting out. It's just, it works well for them, and it brings more money to their pockets. And mm -hmm. I don't understand why the women don't figure this out and work together and try to get past like, okay, you don't like that about her, so what? I'm sure it's things these guys don't like about each other, but they still get into the bag. Like, it, it, I think we are kind of coming to that. It's, it's very competitive mm -hmm. amongst women. Mm -hmm. It's extremely, it's like every woman wants to be that one sought after, most desired, baddest, mm -hmm. everything. And I've never been caught up on that. Like, I just want to rap, you know, I just want to get it in kill everything and then get up out of there. Right. You know, so. And like you said, there's enough out there for everybody. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand why there's always that crab in the bucket mentality. Like, yeah, and you know, women. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's insane. But I, I try to push the, push the thing, you know, the whole, it's not really a stereotype because we do it, but I just try to get that out of the room. Mm -hmm. And when I'm around other women, I just try to be open and receptive and, like, I, I appreciate you for this. And that's mm -hmm. why I said that about Nicki Minaj, because I appreciate her doors that she kicked down. Um, yes, yeah, some of the things that I don't appreciate that she's done, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. But like I said, you can't, 
you can't expect people to be who you want them to be. You have to accept them for who they are. Right. You know, and you can't take away the accomplishments that she's had and mm-hmm. made. So, um, I don't know. I'm just like the glue. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I appreciate every female rapper for her contributions because I've been here a long time mm-hmm. and I know the struggle and I know the fight that we've had to have to get to where we are today. Well, I'm hoping that attitude spills over, you know, into all the other female artists and and their way of thinking and their mentalities because it's been you know i was thinking i'm gonna and i'm actually gonna touch on what jd said and this Mm -hmm. folds into that he gave his honest opinion about women in rap today by saying that they're basically it's it's strippers rap we know that's not true um for every female artist right but we also know that that is how most female artists get the, the majority of their recognition i mean even some of your more popular or the some of your most popular songs were sexually charged yes so do you feel that in order to get ahead and in order to be recognized in this industry you still have to keep that that theme going because okay we had Queen Latifah we had MC Light we had Miss Melody like in the late 80s early 90s and they were hot for like a hot second Mm -hmm. but then came Lil Kim and Foxy Brown and that and that sex theme kind of permeated from then up until this point. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about that? Do you think that anything can change? Can we change the narrative? Well, um, okay. So I want to start out just by saying that uh, I did see the interview with JD. Mm-hmm. Um, JD is a friend of mine. We've done work together. We had a song on, um, on my album. Mm-hmm. And um, just, he's a really cool guy. And I just need to say that. And I, what, J, what JD was saying is that, okay, Right now in the game, right now, the top two female rappers, mm-hmm. Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion. Mm-hmm. That's what you hear when you, when you go on your Instagram, that's what you see. You turn on your radio, that's who you hear. Yep. Was Cardi B a dancer? Yes. Was Megan Thee Stallion a dancer? Yep. That's what JD <laughs> was saying, you guys. Don't take it any further than that. That's all he was saying. Now, as far as all female rappers mm-hmm. being strippers, that was not his statement. So when we address the rest of us, it's just sex sales and sex yeah. been, has been selling long before we were here. Mm-hmm. It's going to be selling long before we gone. Now we're talking about money. So we're talking about the higher power now. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about what you want to go in the studio and push. Because I'm sure these women have other records yeah. that are not revolving around popping ass and mm-hmm. twerking. But when you get to the higher power, which are your record labels and the companies that own them, Mm -hmm. they are going to push what sells because that's what they're all about. They're not about a message. Mm -hmm. They're not about a movement. They're about a trend because a trend is what sells. Sex is a common denominator. It will always sell. Mm -hmm. So that's the comfort zone for them. That's what they do with us artists, women, us female artists. Mm -hmm. They put you there. If you happen to be a Lauryn Hill and take off, you have to do that on your own and pick up that speed and then they'll get behind you. Mm-hmm. But yes, as a female artist getting into the music industry, yes, that is going to be pushed on you. The sex, selling the sex, the sexiness is going to be what is what is pushed on you because these people aren't investing in you for fun. They're investing in you to get money back for the, residual the income. And that's the only way that they're going to receive that is by giving the people what they want. At the end of the day, it's all about business. Yep. But that's why a lot of women, we, we want to see, you know, maybe there's some women out there who could do what Chance the Rapper did mm-hmm. and push their own initiative yes. and not rely on r- record labels and mm-hmm. them telling them what they have to put out there yeah. and what they have to, you know, what they have to sell. It's, excuse me. It's a lot of on, on the people, too, because, you know, like, OK, we'll do a concert. Say, for instance, we'll do a concert or a uh, Save the World concert, all the donations will go to such and such, and this will be just very organic and, mm-hmm. and you know, just a festival, come out and really be, you know, an artist, be mm-hmm. yourself. And then we'll have the big twerkathon contest down the street, whereas the top twerker get $5,000. Which one you gonna think is gonna get the <laughs> biggest turnout? Yeah, everybody so be twerking. It's, it's yep. about, it's kind of about the consumer as well. Mm-hmm more so than the artists mm-hmm. because like I said I'm quite sure almost positive these women have records that are have nothing to do with sex nothing mm-hmm. to do about twerking but that's not what's gonna sell that's mm-hmm. not what the consumer is demanding 
and it's like it goes to basic economics. So, I mean, you know, we can write, we can go on and on about that, mm -hmm. but we just know that it's female artists out here that are really getting it in, getting in the studio. They about bars, they about metaphors, they giving you line for line, just just straight content to keep your mind open and keep you woke. So just do your history and, and, and look them up and find them and support mm -hmm. them. And, um, you know, just as much as you support the rest. And, and, and then I think we'll see a little bit of a change if we mm -hmm. go that route. Now, you talked about the camar camaraderie between women and the female rappers. Now, a little while ago, Nuisance posted on her Instagram a photo collage of you, herself, the Brat, Chella H, Tink, and Dreezy. Mm -hmm. And she said that would be her dream collabo. Yeah. Like a song with every do you know the city would go crazy if everybody she posted on there y'all yeah. got together and put a record together yes i do so is it possible we just got to do it we just got to reach out to them we got to get the record get the track get yep. the studio mm -hmm. find out everybody's schedules and get it done mm -hmm. i'm not gonna sit here and say it's not possible because i know it is i know them and i know they'd be down i think that'll put the whole i think that not only will it show everybody else look women can work together mm -hmm. but it would also set a precedent for people in chicago as well yeah because we people do that because look ain't nobody messing with us nobody's just, done that from chicago like we go so hard mm -hmm. like if we was to do a record like that and all of us be on there you look it's gonna set a trend you're gonna get the women from such and such area to try mm -hmm. to do it then over here they're gonna mm -hmm. try to do it then over here they're gonna try to do it but who did it first exactly you know what i mean exactly so, Okay, Mandy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I push that. Yes. I'm going to push that initiative. Yes. And I know Nuisance, so I'm going to make sure I'm going to tell her that, look, I had a conversation mm -hmm. with Shauna. Yeah. I, they, they know <laughs> we it. need to do I this. I know for a fact. You said Nuisance, me, Brad, Chella, Dreezy. And Tink. And Tink. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact they'll do yep. it. Mm -hmm. I know they would. Yep. Yep. Okay. What would the 2019 Shauna say to the 2001 Shauna with regard to your music career? <laughs> Stop blowing all that money. Stop <laughs> spending that money on your friends. <laughs> Them not your friends. No, seriously. Like, seriously. I would, um, I would tell myself, stop trying to take everybody with you. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't go. I would tell myself to invest. And I would tell myself to learn the business. A little more learn the business more stop trusting people to conduct your business mm -hmm. so yeah that in a nutshell that's what I would tell myself okay before we go we just wanted to give you the floor so you can okay. share your social media how yes. people can check you Thank out you. yes like I said before <laughs> Um, Y'all can check me out. I facilitate everything pretty much from my Instagram, which is Shauna Worldwide. Uh, it's S H A W N N A Worldwide. I didn't do any tweaked out spelling of it or whatever. That's just it. Um, got a new single coming up. I got a single that's out right now called Round Here. It's crazy. It's about the crib because you know we don't mess around around here. Shorty, he fresh off a pill. House on the hill. I saw my neck, got me chill. My bro, a check on my grill. Let's keep it real. Bitches can't fuck with me still. I just go in for the kill. Fuck what you think. I'ma go straight to the bank. I'ma go catch me a check. Hop in the back. Then I go fuck up a sex. You bitches fuck up for bucks. I'm from the back. Tell me who fucking with that. Better go look up the facts. I've been no plaques. Next single is featuring Mikey Dollars and Juicy Fruit out of Memphis. Shout out Juicy, shout out Mikey. Um, we setting up for the video. I got, um, I'm pulling together some of Chicago's funniest comedians, like Shaky. I'm pulling together um, a lot of the people from the city that, you know, kind of promote and do the parties. I feel like we need to kind of come together a little more and, and, and support each other in each other's events. Absolutely. So, um, just, that's pretty much just reaching out, getting everything going. Like I said, come to my page, check out them freestyles, give me some feedback. I'm always on there. I talk to you, talk to me, I talk back. You know, I'm one of them type of artists. Um, let me see, I got the video. I don't, I'm, we're looking to, we're projecting the fall to drop something because it's high demand right now because of what I've been doing. But like I said, I really just want to wake everybody up, get everybody back familiar with Shauna, what I'm about, the type of artist I am. All the support is much appreciated. Thank you so much for coming down, Mandy. I Thank really you. appreciate it. She said she's coming back. We at Buddy Guys Legends. This is my pop's place, y'all. It's a lot of love down here. Good music, good food. I'm always down here kicking it. 
Come holla at your girl. <laughs> Dude, the shot town in me. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I've had to tell a lot of people when I go out of town. Look. If you don't understand it, come take a visit. Excuse the shat town in me, baby. You already know. It's your girl, Shauna. Shauna Worldwide. Come check me out. Rock with your girl. I got a lot of stuff going on. You know I'm always repping Chicago, baby. It's our turn. It's our time. Either we're going to do it with you or we're going to do it without you. That's what's up. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so again. much. I appreciate everything. <laughs> this is so cool. Yes.